Uh, I'm thinking of calling this series the uh, Power Wash Power Hour. Hmm? Huh? Ah, uh. <laughs> another person entering the Power Hour arena. I like it. <laughs> That's but, that's the plan. Everyone on YouTube has to have a power hour series. I know, right? Yeah. I, w- I would love to actually talk about that because I kind of want to just to be a free space to talk about whatever. Because I realized that on the last. Oh, I guess I have. Why am I starting? I'm just so addicted. <laughs> I haven't even kicked any of this off. I don't have an <laughs> intro or anything. I don't know what I'm doing, man. It's OK. You, you got this. I believe in you. Yeah. Well, everyone, welcome. This is the first episode of I think I was actually going to call it Power Wash Pals, um, but I don't know. Whatever. Uh, power wash power hour sounds so good though. Power wash power pals? Yeah. Something like that. I like that. All right. Comments. Uh tell me which one of those is your favorites. Um, my first guest is uh Sean Mr. Jack Septicai. Captain Coffee himself. Captain Coffee, the Lord of the Beans himself. That's great. Yeah. Us with his presence. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Write something. Do something cool. All right. Now that we're together. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. That's going to be really cool. No, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it got the Lord of the Beans approval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me wipe that. So, uh, Not oh to like God. make too much of my own artistic ability, but I think they, my editors might have to censor that. <laughs> Just, I had no idea what you were drawing for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it was well drawn, but you know. <laughs> I appreciate not going for the penis. Okay, good. I thought that was too cliche. That's old us. That's like yeah. 2014 us. Right. The bar was so low. Yeah, I know. And we right? still found a way to get under it. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, always plumbing new depths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, everyone watching at home, this is uh, just a chill opportunity for uh, people to power wash because it's such a simplistic thing and chat about those things that we ordinarily do not chat about or whatever have you. This yeah, is- it's basically a way for you to feel better about your addiction of playing this game. <laughs> Hey, now, come on. <laughs> that was, that was the part alone, of the, the prompt you weren't supposed to read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I'm off script. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, I was I was playing this the other day, and I really was like, man, I keep things really close to the chest a lot, and I just, like, so many secrets, not like, not like bodies in my closet, but, you know, secret mm-hmm. projects that I'm working on, or, you know, oh, I got to keep the mystique up. And I, and it does serve a purpose, and there are some things that I'm like, oh, I shouldn't spoil everything, but also just, like, an opportunity to talk openly about whatever uh, whatever you just have on your mind. So that's kind of all this really is. Yeah, I did, um, I did like, the Trash Taste podcast recently with the anime man and his crew. Mm-hmm. And they, <laughs> and his crew, as if he's, like, the head of it, but... <laughs> I'm trying to find an entry point for you to understand. Uh huh. No, I'm I'm on. I'm I. I gotcha. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was the thing. I I like told a story about like how I wanted to do whiskey before coffee, and everyone was like, "Oh, really?" Mm-hmm. It's like, did I not talk about this? And then another story about how I got sent like horse shit to my house one time. Like <laughs> there was a there was a service you can just send animal shit to people's houses awesome. as like a prank. Good prank. And of course. Being a YouTuber and people finding your address is like, oh, uh, right, you can do that. And then people are like, I had no idea. And I'm like, man, the amount of stuff that we've gone through that people probably just have no idea about. Yeah, it is really kind of a mystery, this world that we live in. Not that we're different people, but just like the circumstances that we uh, are in are kind of fundamentally different. So there's things that we have to think about that not a lot of people do. Um, and not in a, oh, we're so special way and an, oh, man, kind of way. You know, yeah, I think it was um, because VidCon just happened recently uh, from Mm -hmm. this recording, maybe not the upload, but um, I forget which Minecrafter was talking about this. Uh, I think they talked about it afterwards. Um, There was uh, someone that said, like, wow, being at VidCon was great because of all the people there actually able to see the fans, which I like I do appreciate. And that's great. Um, But he also said something about. I it it made me realize, however, I was kind of sad because I couldn't make a personal connection with my fans and i was like yes that 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 thing i pointed at it i was like that that thing like that's Mm -hmm. uh, people know the me crying meme probably 
um, from my like eight million subscriber from your videos, many crying videos from my many many crying videos. Um, but that one in particular was like particularly sad because I had that same realization, and it was almost like a culmination of denialism for me, being like, "No, I yeah. can maintain this relationship. I can." And that that video solidified that feeling of me just like, "Oh shit, I can't." And that was that was right. really hard to take. Yeah, I think we all like have our own version of it at some point. It like hits. Well, weirdly, it's like hitting at the same time, because I remember like I think it was Felix that went through a certain period after like five or six years. And then it was kind of like, like, what am I doing? What do I want to do next? Mm -hmm. And then I remember you going through the same sort of thing around the same sort of benchmark. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, yeah, it won't happen to me. And then almost the exact same time frame, like within that five to six years, I was like, what am I doing, man? Should I quit? I, I think I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think people don't realize just how many times probably you and I, well, me have said to myself, is it time to quit? Like, should I quit? Yeah. Uh, because mm -hmm. it, it is one of the things where you don't want to just fizzle out. You don't want to hold on too long because that's kind of sad yeah. uh you've seen examples of it i'm not going to name specific ones um but i'm sure people in the comments can say specific examples of like moments when they've seen like a content creator or someone in the internet or a celebrity or whatever that held on too tightly trying to just cling to that last bit of hope uh it's not even a relevancy thing it's like you know everyone has their moment and it ends at some point mine will end like yours will end or maybe like it won't. I have no idea. We don't really know what the future is. I thought my channel would have died a long time ago, but here I still yeah, am. Maybe yeah. that's where that period kicks in because it's like, shit, I thought, I, I thought I'd be kicked off this platform. Yeah. Shouldn't, I, shouldn't I be gone? Shouldn't I have been canceled by far? I should have done something shitty by far right now. Hmm. Weird. Well, I'm sure we've done stuff that, well, I guess not really, but it's a case of I think it's like holding yourself more accountable than anybody else can. Mm -hmm. I feel like you and I both kind of come from and maybe that's why like some of the jadedness kicks in at some point for some parts of it because mm -hmm. it's like you you we like to do things honestly and earnestly and a bit more transparently mm -hmm. and kind of like kind of keep our audiences in the loop and then when you can't it kind of like falls apart and then there's just a lot of things at play with it that kind of gets in your head mm -hmm. um and some other youtubers just aren't like that and it's a different like form of doing this sort of work yeah, they're just uh, both different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there, there's goods and bads for both of because I feel like the people who are a bit more closed off then don't have as much, like, pressure put on themselves mm -hmm. yeah. to, like, keep that sort of connection. But if you start off with that genuine uh, sincerity and kind of, like, having that open door nature and then that kind of falls apart and then people are like, man, it's just not the same as when you were like able to talk to all of us. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. And it fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to figure out a way of like trying to get that communal feeling back yeah. in a system that's full of like bad comment systems and bad rating systems. It's like, how do I, how do I connect with you guys? I know. Right. And it's uh, like, the sad thing is I don't think that there ever will be a way to do that. Humans just weren't built to operate on such a massive social scale. It is completely un, like it's completely dissimilar from anything our ancestors ever experienced. The only yeah. times that they might've was when they were some emperor or king or something, and they all went crazy. Every single one of them. <laughs> So yep. it's uh, I'm not saying we're uh, kings or emperors, but it's like when you have that many people that are willing to forgive you of anything and like will always adore you and you always have that core super fan base uh, that that can like really poison someone's perspective. Uh, I'm not saying it hasn't poisoned mine or yours, but I mean, it's just like it's it really is a, the adage of like power corrupts, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's in some places it definitely skews your your perception of people because it, it turns into like you just go through so many experiences where people want something out of you so then everybody at some point it's like well what do you want mm -hmm. and you kind of have to like unlearn that pattern because i keep <laughs> i keep reiterating as well everyone keeps talking about like oh hate is so like don't believe the haters like do your own thing and whatever i'm like yeah but there's so many people who are just willing to kiss our asses for doing nothing mm -hmm. it's like I use the example of like, I, we, you or I could go to Twitter right now and say, guys, having a bad day. Can you give me some compliments? Mm -hmm. And then it's it's easy. You just people immediately tell you how amazing you are. And that's so poisonous to someone's mind. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, encouragement is one thing, but you're totally right about that because it is just that distortion of reality is maybe you were being a shithead and you don't need compliments right now. Like yeah. uh, it's, it's a, it's just a creating, it's a confirmation bias. You know, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. an echo chamber of what you want to hear as opposed to what you need to hear in the moment. Um, and that's right. why I operate on that principle of like, I don't really get bothered by bad comments. Um, but also I don't really get impacted by good comments. It's, it's those comments from friends and people that I really trust that cut me to my core. Um, yeah, because they know me, or at least I believe that they should know me. So it's like, Oh fuck, it really makes me look inside myself and it really makes me feel good when they do compliment me. So it's, it's a, uh, it's a constant trade off. And now recently VidCon, it was different. I went to VidCon for one panel only. I was not there for the whole event. Um, but I had an interesting experience because it's now, it's now VidCon presented by TikTok. So that is, um, oh, yeah. that is a much more fundamental change, I think, than people realize in terms of the landscape of content creation and like what it means to be a content creator. Um, mm -hmm. but there, there was an interesting moment there with another content creator. There's a couple there, but I personally had one where there was another creator and I hope he doesn't think I'm calling him out or anything. I just thought it was really interesting, um, from like a social dynamic, uh, aspect. He came up to me. I didn't recognize him. And he said like, Oh, Hey, you're Markiplier, right? Uh, I have 19 million subscribers. And then he, he presented that as like, this is my reasoning of why you should listen to me. And I legitimately yeah. laughed. I laughed out loud <laughs> at the ridiculousness of it. Um, and I think he thought I was like laughing at his number of subscribers or something, which I wasn't. <laughs> I really wasn't. I was just like, I've never had anyone introduce themselves with their number of subscribers first. Uh, because if it's not evident for people listening at home, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how many or few you have. If you're interesting to talk to, I'll talk to you. And I have, if I have the opportunity to do so but it was the uh, animator versus animation guy which of mm. course I, I didn't recognize him um but i was like oh shit i've watched your stuff since new grounds like i watched the first right. one way back when so it was it was one of those things where it's like i don't need to know your your metrics of success like on the internet but apparently like that that is the thing you know people care very much yeah. about how many follows you have and that ties into my other thing of you probably saw the the tiktok from the creator the tiktok person who uh didn't have a single person at their meet and greet right oh yeah which is very sad and i'm sure it's not like they don't have fans or their fans are fake that's not what i'm saying at all it is like mm -hmm. uh it's the difficulty of being like a global uh platform and a global influencer, you don't know where your audience really is. So even if you have, say, a million followers, which is an ungodly amount of people, you should be very proud of that. Um, it doesn't always translate to people showing up in the moment. Um, and right. also, additionally, there's this disconnect in terms of connecting to the creator themselves that I think TikTok as a platform doesn't really allow for as much yeah, as, no, say, YouTube. Really. Yeah, it's not so much a forum anymore there, but it's it's kind of like, I mean, it's the same, like both of us went on tour at one point and it's it's the same thing where it's like, how do I get you guys to come out and see me in person versus like what I was doing on a screen? And a lot of people are very active and they, they really want to and YouTube is better at pushing that than TikTok would be. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you go to the town and then people are like, oh my God, why are you here? It's like, I've promoted the shit out of this. <laughs> yeah, and you still have no, no idea why I'm in town. Yeah. And they're like, I'm such a big fan. And I'm like, really? I've been talking about this for like four months. Uh. And I felt like I was saying it too much. And then it's like, no, clearly, clearly not. I need to talk a lot more about this. Because I've always had a hard time kind of tooting my own horn. Mm -hmm. I never hype up my own content, no matter what I'm doing. I like... I'll talk about it and say that I'm proud of something that goes well, but I'll never be the one to be like, yeah, I'm the greatest. Look at what I made. It's so good. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, if, if the content's good, it'll speak for itself and people who really enjoy it will enjoy it. And then they'll say nice things about it. And that means more to me than, I, I don't know. I feel like these platforms for a lot, for a lot of people is like, you kind of have to tell people how you want your content to per be perceived. And mm -hmm. I've always kind of avoided that because yeah. I don't. I'm like, if I'm being a shitty person, then I don't want to just say, like, I'm not being a shitty person. And then people are like, oh, yeah, true. <laughs> true, 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 best yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, I, you're not. Oh, wow. It, it, I didn't think about it like that. Because you see the people do, like, charity stuff, and then they're they're all they can do is talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. hey, yeah. 
and take pictures about it and then be like, look what I did. I'm so great. Yeah, I know. And it's like, yes, some people should be proud of their accomplishments. And I, I think you should be of proud of your accomplishments. And uh, but it, but it is also a thing like when we're in a world where algorithms basically dictate what is presented to people um, that that makes people think that that's the only uh, method of consumption for people when in reality hmm. It it removes choice from consumer to pursue things that they want or what they don't know they want and can find. The discoverability yeah. of the algorithm is great. The using it as a, as a basis to understand the people who are making your content is worse. And that's why I also operate on the mentality of like, I want to make things. And I'll promote the things that I really think people should care about to some extent. But for the most part, I don't really ask people to subscribe. I don't ask people to like uh, engage with it. Uh, I see so much of that because everyone's like basing on analysis of data and statistics. Like if yeah. you mention this at this time code, it'll get this much percentage more engagement. It's like, but also if it was really good content, wouldn't they engage with it anyway? Because they yeah. love it and like you. And so few people embrace that mentality because it is less, oh, I hate to use the word successful, metric, measurably impactful is what I'll say. Yeah, I, I mean, both of us kind of tried it at one point to see if it would work. Mm -hmm. And I think we're so ingrained in the culture of like not doing that that it, I don't think it makes a huge difference for us. Yeah. But it's, it's that YouTube is definitely more of a, a game than an art form at this point. Like people mm -hmm. aren't creating for the sake of create, well, I shouldn't say everybody like, of course, there are people out there doing it, but the things that pe are being pushed in people's faces all the time are not that kind of content. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just it's like it's people understanding their metrics and then f like fine tooth combing that and like dotting the I's and crossing the T's and making sure everything's perfect. And then it's title and thumbnail first or it's mm -hmm. like so much more paramount to the content than it's ever been. And then the video goes out, whereas I think you and I operate on a different kind of basis mm -hmm. where we just we just do things for the sake of it and yeah. i feel like that's where some of the like maybe i should quit because it's like i don't know if i even like this ecosystem anymore like mm -hmm. i just want to make what i make and yeah. i think that that fundamental like understanding is where my shift happened where i'm like yeah i could just ignore that and do whatever i want and that's kind of the space that i'm in now where everything's a bit more fun that way mm -hmm. which is great like I'm, I'm super glad to hear that and i want people at home to also know because they're probably so used to hearing people toot their own horns. We're not saying we're better than others for not doing that. Like, oh, we're yeah. not playing your game, so we're so much more noble. Like, it's, it's not what it's Yeah, about. if anything, it's it's smart <laughs> business to play it that way. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. that's how you grow. Yeah, clearly there's measurable success for it. And yes, it does work. But I always embrace the idea that there are people behind the views, behind the numbers, mm -hmm. behind everything. I actually, when I was at VidCon, I was talking with Ben Rellis at YouTube. He, he no longer works at YouTube, he actually quit. Um, but I was talking with him about this exact thing, about the idea yeah. that a creator can thrive, not only succeed, but thrive uh, without really thinking or planning towards uh, algorithmic success because it's people watching, it is people and I've always had this philosophy that when someone is engaging with your contract, they are giving you their time. And we all know that yeah. time is the most valuable thing that anybody can have, give, or spend, even if we waste a lot more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just like this whole thing is an excuse for me to waste time and wash some stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's a contract, right? That's a contract for creators with their audience. And if you're going to make it worth their time, then I want it to be in their hands to choose whether or not it's worth their time to come back. I'm going to keep making stuff and I'm going to keep trying to improve. And hopefully that's enticing enough for people to constantly check in on me, which I think is where the phenomena of like, oh, what are you doing in this town? I haven't heard from you. I'm a big fan. They are. But, you know, their time, it gets away from them. They, they get busy with other things. There's channels that I love and really, yeah. really admire that I haven't watched in a while just because I haven't had the time or it hasn't been a priority or I haven't thought about it. It uh, doesn't mean that I don't care about that creator. And that distinction of caring about the creator and the creations that they make is, I think, the key difference in all of that. You have longevity in your fans because people have seen your journey and seen how far you come uh, in terms of growing as a creator and as a person. Uh, whereas 
if you if like TikTok stars, no, I'm not disparaging them in any way, uh, but you may see one TikTok and be like, that was a really funny TikTok and you may recognize them on the street, uh, but the personal connection is lacking because you haven't seen their journey because the algorithm has not dictated that you should see their journey. You have to pursue that. And I'm not yeah. saying there aren't fans that don't pursue that on TikTok, but it's I, I don't know about you, but I go entirely by the For You page on TikTok. I don't ever look into people's profiles. Yeah, I, I don't really follow anybody because I'm afraid that it, it'll like shift my algorithm too much. Yeah, I don't then I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm locked into that kind of humor then because I do a lot of like reacting to TikTok videos. Uh -huh. And then it's like, I kind of want to just like keep things a bit more freeform and have the algorithm like dictate what I'm watching. Yeah. But that, I feel like that platform is so algorithmically driven that it's like even when people try to have a more personal connection it just it's like an uphill battle for them and mm -hmm. it's it's really tricky because there's some people who are really really talented on there and really really good and that that their platforms are tr thriving there but it's i don't know it's kind of like twitch and youtube are a similar case where it's it, especially with live streaming like if someone live streams on youtube it's like you get a hundred thousand viewers but it's not like a hundred thousand viewers would be the same on Twitch. It's like a hundred thousand viewers on YouTube is like 20, 30 K on Twitch. I think mm -hmm. for like the amount of involvement that that chat has in what's going on. I don't mm -hmm. like, it's not really comparable is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Different uh, audiences, different like practices, different habits, uh, Twitch audience, yeah. always much more engaged in the comments, way always. more engaged. Yeah. And there's a certain fun to be had with that. Uh, it's not saying our big fat YouTube numbers aren't really, really cool and all, but there is something about having that core audience that is hyper focused on you. And I think Twitch in a way kind of does it more when I'm talking about that, that personal engagement with your creator. And it is like your creator because fans, if you want to be a fan with someone, you kind of have to dedicate your entire focus on one, two, or maybe a handful of people because you are watching their stream for hours. Like, yeah, I would say it's like Twitch in terms of personal engagement is way up there because it's a pure live streaming experience. YouTube is next because you can see their VOD history, their entire journey. And if you really like something, the algorithm will constantly throw you more of that person. And then TikTok is like uh, as the duration of viewing goes lower and lower, the ability to personally connect with a single uh, user goes down and down. Um, and then with TikTok, there's so many people that I've never seen before that pop up on my For You page for one video and I'm like, ah, that's great. And then I never yeah. see them again. Yeah, it's, it's very digestible culture. And it's, it's a shame because, I mean, we've been doing this so long. Like you're, you just hit 10 years. I'll be hitting 10 years in a couple of months. Hell yeah. And hell then yeah. it's like, you see all the cycles that goes through and what comes and goes. And I was talking about this with like Tommy and them at his show yesterday that there's so many like companies that try to invade the space and everyone's like, oh, it's going to get too corporate. And I just, we all kind of like worried about it a little bit. And then the thing that YouTube does best and why it still stands the test of time and why we're still here is because that open nature with the creator is what it's like makes it thrive. Mm -hmm. Like you can you can watch Netflix, you can watch Stranger Things and everything, but then you have to go somewhere else to like chat about it. Yeah. Whereas YouTube, it's like it's audience and creator melded together, which is good and bad. Mm -hmm. But the reason that the platform exists for so long and the reason that the creators still kind of dictate what's going on on that platform, like talk shows came in, tried to like dominate the space and everyone got worried and it just didn't go anywhere. They kind of like buckled to what the creators were doing and they still they talk like creators on there now mm -hmm. because that like human connection is still king above everything else like people want that people like paste themselves on a youtube avatar mm -hmm. and people who are in like their teenage years trying to like find themselves would relate to what we said and i feel like our channels were so similar for so long probably still are but people like connect with us and live vicariously through us and that personal connection. And then some people want to be you and like share your values and mm -hmm. kind of share your morals and be that type of person. So mm -hmm. then they, they just get so involved in your style and in your personality and in your morals. And then as you like shift and grow, so do they, and their con your, their opinion shift, your content shifts. And then they either grow with you or they like move on to somebody else that shares the values that they have now. And I think that that's what's so fundamental to what we do um and that's what TikTok and like 
some platforms kind of lack because it is so it's meant to be digested and it's meant to serve you as much content as possible and not give you the same person too much on like your for you page or mm -hmm. it's trying to like mix things up all the time to keep it fresh and not keep you locked into one space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just are terrified of people getting bored and leaving the platform. Got to keep them in yeah. the system, which is what every company does. So it's not really that big of a change. Um, but for the people listening at home, I actually want to list. I want to hear what your thoughts on this are. If you have been able to make a personal connection in not in a parasocial way, I'm, we're not talking about that, but just like you feel like you really understand a creator on TikTok. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Like, was it more difficult if you have? Do you find yourself more of a YouTube person, a TikTok person? Do you think your consumption is changing of content? Uh, and again, I'm not asking this for research purposes. I'm just generally curious. Yeah. I don't really care if you do, but uh, I do want to hear if it's easier or harder for you to make that personal connection because I think the people that yeah, would be listening here would want that. I'd say, is the platform working against you to try and have that connection? Mm, that's a good point. Or, yeah. or is it like... It, are we just oblivious to it because we don't use the platform that way? Because mm -hmm. I yeah. feel like we're so ingrained in YouTube culture that we just stick to this. It's Yeah, it's funny because it's kind of the opposite of the way I use YouTube, whereas YouTube, I don't do any really of the recommendations. I go straight to people's channels if I want to see anything. But TikTok yeah, is very too. opposite. I, I literally let the algorithm control my fate. Mm -hmm. Whatever will be, will be. Um, well, I, I guess... I guess you go to TikTok for a specific purpose as well. You don't, for most people, they go there because they're sitting on the toilet or on the train or something. And you want to see like a meme for like five minutes mm -hmm. or however long you want to waste your time on it or like you're lying in bed. Whereas I feel like, again, maybe I'm just totally wrong, but maybe you people go to YouTube for a very different purpose. You go there for like tutorials, you go there for updates, you go there for information kind of mm. stuff. I, I go there to sit down and eat a meal and watch something fun. It's a perfect amount of time for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really wonderful. Uh, all right. So shifting gears away from uh, internet culture and our experiences on the internet. Yeah, we're just sad, grumpy old men. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't we don't know what we're talking about. We're not the youth anymore. <laughs> we're everything we said is wrong. <laughs> I mean, Every, we, everyone watching this is just like, this guys have no fucking idea what they're talking about. <laughs> I mean, that could be true. I've kind of operated on that principle that I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. Yeah, same. Um, but uh, what are things that you are really getting into? Hobbies. I was talking to you earlier before this about my new hobby with electric bicycles, mm -hmm. and that's really been consuming my life. So uh, what do you enjoy and do in your spare time now that you are a grumpy old man? I've been trying to find stuff that's not screen-based because we have a room in our house we call the chill room that's like there's no TVs or anything in it. There's no screens. We kind of don't like a reading room mm -hmm. and i i tried to get into reading for a while and my adhd brain just it just wanders far too much mm. and then i tried to my girlfriend's really into like jigsaw puzzles mm. but for me it's like i don't know why i get into like a challenge with myself to like do it quickly mm -hmm. and then i can't like find where the piece is going to go and then i get all like mad at myself for it oh, <laughs> I'm like no. it's not why you're supposed to be making these so mm -hmm. The thing I've gotten into recently is just making Lego sets. Ah, that's good. Which just makes me feel like a big kid again. And it's like it's like 3D puzzles ah. in a way. But I, I like the autonomy of it where I can like I can listen to an audiobook and then sort of like follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. So my brain I it lets my brain melt in a way that's like really therapeutic for me. That I think doing something with my hands is very important to me that's not screen based because a lot of my spare time is like i like watching movies i love playing games still in my spare time but that's hmm. it's like that's still work kind of in a way mm -hmm. that you're well not work but like you're still sitting at a screen and you're like you're occupying your brain in the same sort of space mm -hmm. I'm like trying to find ways to not do that. It's exactly why I like playing this game. <laughs> it's not <laughs> quite working with my hands, but it gives that facsimile of it. 
Um, but with my hobby of uh, doing e-bikes, I have noticed that I have started actually using my tools and fiddling with the bike. And I keep oh, going. Yeah. I, I keep going out to my garage, and I'm like, doop, I'm a mechanic. <laughs> I'm a big boy now. I'm, I'm using my tools. And then I realize oh, I'm 33, and this is actually just what I'm doing. <laughs> so, yeah. But it, it's been really fun because of that feeling of like being a kid again. Um, like getting on a bike because I think almost everybody has at some point learned how to ride a bike. They've ridden a bike or whatever have you. If you haven't ridden a bike, let me know in the comments. I'm so sorry for bringing this up. Um, but being on an e-bike is like, it's just so fun because you get that boost of power. You know, as a kid, you're tireless. You know, you can never get tired. Boundless energy. As a grumpy yeah. adult, you're like, mm -hmm. I don't want to wake up ever. <laughs> and then you have to get on with your day and do whatever you're doing. Um, but I commuted to the uh, corridor office, which I'm interning at for the time being. Um, very fun, by the way. I can talk about that in a bit. But it's just mm -hmm. like it's just that little bit of something where I have an actual hobby that's physical, not in any way digital. It's a physical object that moves me in the world and really grounds me and connects me. It's a cool piece of technology, which is also something that interests me. And I can fiddle with it. And I can also break it, which I did this morning. I just completely borked my entire uh, uh, chain tensioner, which, you know, I had it perfect. And then I screwed too hard and it uh, threaded, de-threaded, it stripped the screw and uh, it, no work no more. So now it's got zip ties on it and it kind of works. <laughs> But You're going to get killed on this thing. I'm probably not, but you know, it is. That's why I got a full face helmet. Like, wear your helmets, kids. People think it, like, yeah. oh, you you know, helmet nerd. And I'm like, I like my brain being inside my skull and I like my chin being intact. So I have a full face helmet and also yeah. I look super rad. Dude, people were like, do you want to do like creator clash and box someone? And I was like, not really, because I already have like tinnitus and I have like eye issues. And I'm like, on the off chance that someone punches me and then like something breaks inside my head, I'm like, I, I care about my brain way too much. Yeah, really. People kept thinking like, you know, oh, Mark's definitely going to do it next time. Definitely. I'm like, there's I, I don't want to get punched in the head. Like, yeah, I'll get pepper sprayed because I know that's not going to be permanent damage. It, like, I'm yeah. not going to just go out there and go jumping off of shit because I think that I love the rush so much. No, I like the challenge, but it's it's boxing is dangerous. That's what people don't seem to ever really connect with. It's really yeah. dangerous. Getting hit in the head once can do permanent damage. That's yep. not an exaggeration. People need to understand that. I mean, plenty of boxers go through it and they, you know, they train and they're able to take punches and roll with them and be able to handle themselves in a, in a safe way. That's But that's why amateur boxing can be more dangerous because they don't know how to properly defend themselves at all times and they don't, they're unable to get themselves out of dangerous situations or they don't realize that they're putting themselves in danger and not protecting themselves. There's a lot of variables in there with amateur boxing. That being said, I, I am very proud of everyone that did create a clash. I thought it was a great event. Um, yeah, huge respect fun. to them. Absolutely, but I'm not going to get punched in the head. No, thank you. Yeah, people were like, would you fight Mark? And I'm like, he would fucking kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've seen you rock climb and you're like so much beefier than I am. I'm like, you would just punch me once in the head and I would die. What is it, what's your weight at? What, what, what weight class would you be? Um, I think I'm down to like 65 or 66 kilos. So it's like, what is that? Hold what on. Are those bizarre numbers. What is 65 kilos in pounds? 143. Okay, yeah. I'm 185 right now, so I would have about oh. 40 pounds on you. Uh, and that yeah. makes a huge difference, everybody. However, my head's also huge, and I think that's a disadvantage because I don't think it's all skull. Uh, I think I, it might just be my brain is big, but, you know, not in a smart way, in an easily bruised way. You know, yeah, there's a lot more to rattle around. Yeah, I think that if you put um, if you punch me in the head, it'd be like the pear wiggler and you would just, my brain would just. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I could throw a pretty hefty punch, but again, I, I just don't want to. I don't have. I also don't have that thing in me where I need to find out. I don't I have nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. I, I see that a lot where people are like. Oh, like you used to try harder or something like whatever, like it's water off a duck's back at this point. But I'm like, a lot of it is just like, like you're older, you're more secure in yourself. I don't need to like prove myself to many people anymore. I'm just comfy where mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. 
I don't need to, I don't need to get punched. Yeah, absolutely. And and a lot of people have this like uh, an, there's a better word than machismo, you know, a more gender yeah. neutral term, but it's like they have this desire to prove themselves and be like, I, I don't want to be a wimp. It's why people go like, oh, I don't want to wear a helmet because that's what babies do. <laughs> it's yeah. just like it leads to really stupid decisions like that um, because if you fall off anything, a bike or whatever have you, uh, and you hit your head, uh, you could die. Uh, you could just straight up die. Not even just like, oh, brain damage, you death. That could happen. Brains are very mm-hmm. fragile. And I don't mean to be this ca- overly cautious uh, guy, but at the same time, definitely just protect yourselves out there. Like, wear the proper safety equipment. Put some stickers yeah. on it. Make it look cool, but just wear it. Yeah. Just, like, put a condom on anywhere you go. <laughs> like, wear your diaphragm anywhere you go. <laughs> yeah, really like, you really never happen. know when life's going to come at you hard. <laughs> <laughs> Put a helmet on your knees. God, are diaphragms even really a thing? Maybe, I, maybe I'm out of the loop, but I, I, I yeah, I, I've never I don't met know. a single person in real life that uses a diaphragm. Not that that comes up in conversation a lot. So I maybe, maybe like I don't <laughs> that, think I've ever the asked. That's new VidCon conversation. Is that how many <laughs> subs you have? It's like I have my diaphragm on. <laughs> I had uh, when I was in corridor, there like the power went out for a moment, so everyone was like just sitting around, and I, you know, they were like, "Man, it's real quiet in here without all the computers off." Kind of awkward, and I was like, "I have an icebreaker question that." I think uh, I think either Matt or Ryan brought up at first. It was like, have you ever tried to look at your own butthole in the mirror? Uh, <laughs> and the, Hell the, yeah. the ranges of responses are always hilarious because uh, it's always like, uh, well, technically, I've never done that. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> technically, you've never done that. Uh, because, yeah, that's a very yes or no question, because I've never done that. I have never tried in any way to look at my own butthole in the mirror since that conversation brought up, but I have been so tempted when I, like if I occasionally I'm in the bathroom and I'll remember that that's, that that's a question yeah. that people ask. And I look at myself in the mirror, like, do I want this knowledge unlocked? Do I really want yeah. to expose myself to myself? <laughs> oh, like I've, this? I've stared right on the barrel of that brown starfish. <laughs> Like, I don't think it's going to be a life changing situation, but it's 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 quite the icebreaker in situations because people just it's suddenly. just it's good to know in case you need to pick your own ass out of a lineup. You know? <laughs> yes, officer, that's my. <laughs> no, nah, you can exonerate me. I didn't do it. <laughs> well, I OK, I don't know how. Uh, you know what? The reason for this is to be like open, honest uh-huh, things we've okay. never talked about before. Sure. I have a very hairy ass. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So I feel like just for like good hygiene sake, mm-hmm. I need to like shave mm-hmm. my like mm-hmm. my innards mm-hmm. down there. Mm-hmm. Not like the actual cheeks because who gives a shit? Even though as a kid, it gave me horrible insecurity because every time I saw an ass on TV or in a movie, I'm like, mm-hmm. why is there no hair on any of these dudes asses? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it turns out most people are not born in a bog and are like swamp people like I am. No, no, but, no. Me, I'm a glorious, hairless man. Naturally <laughs> shiny and smooth. Aerodynamic, some might say. You're just a marble statue in human form. Pretty much. You've seen the video, yes, yes, yes. Turn oh, into yeah. a Greek god, yes, of course. D- I, I've been around you many times. I, you you love taking your shirt off at any <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, not as much anymore. I'm I'm a little out of shape, but I'm getting back with my personal trainer. So hopefully that. Yeah, me too. That'll get. I'm like, I want to get like progress quick because I know I can and have in the past. But I'm like, I want to I want to have like sustainable fitness. It's like kind of like eating kind of whatever I want, like still Mm -hmm. being mindful of it, but not like. Oh God, I need to calorie track every single day because it's mm-hmm. just, it's kind of miserable. Yeah, that's why I love the electric bike because it's not as much of a workout as you would get if you uh, were, say, just biking no power. Um, but at the same time, I want to go fast. So I pedal harder and I still have to like make climbs and I still have to work at it. Um, and I end up going out on my bike much more than I would. Like if I need to go to the grocery store, like that's four miles away, I'll take my bike any day. I can actually get there faster on my bike than I would in my car. I have more fun. Mm. I burn like a hundred calories or so. And I, I just enjoy myself. I, it's like a fun trip. Uh, and yeah. oh my God, you just jump scared me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
And it's it's that little little extra push is like, oh, my God, this is like recess for kids. You know, I just like I actually get up and I go out and do something. And it, it's uh, it's that little bit extra. And I think that's helping me in a lot of ways for because you and me, we record videos sitting in a chair most of the time. I can convince yeah. myself I'm being healthy and like I'll stand today in my standing desk. And this is so much better. But it's like that does barely anything. Yeah, I, I remember when I was like you have the TDEE calculators for like how many calories you're burning in a day. Right. Just yeah. by like sitting around and mm -hmm. how many you're supposed to cut and bulk and whatever. I would like train three times a week and I would put my thing into that. And I was always like, yeah, I'm active. I train all the time. And then I was like, wait, no, I sit for like 90% of the rest of that time. So mm -hmm. I was like, I, re I realized that like, I think I've, I think I'm considered lethargic in those kind of apps. Oh no. Lethargic. I'm like, yeah, that was like the realization to be like, man, I really need to like get out and move more. Mm -hmm. I could not recommend an e-bike more. It is so fun. I do mm. kind of think, okay, this is me getting, you know, <laughs> Mark's big ideas. I think that electric bikes are the future of personal I transport. I knew that that was the exact I, sentence hey, you were hey, Come on. <laughs> no, there's, but there's good reason. Do you, do you see why? Do you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, yeah, keep going. with electric bikes, like people have long known that bicycles are a much more uh, efficient and, you know, good for the environment way of transportation, gets people exercise, yada, yada, yada. They're, they're boring. You have to wear your aerodynamic spacesuit, your really dorky helmet. Yes, there are dorky helmets. I said it. And then you look like a big old biker or a skinny bike, whatever. You, you look like a bicyclist, you know, one of those people. Oh, yeah. it, God I, forbid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to anybody that really loves biking. <laughs> I know they don't like e-bikes very much, but and I'm perpetuating the stereotype. But at the same time, you're like a like, crypto bro for cyclists right now. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing of the, what I'm trying to say is like, there's a barrier to entry to be good at cycling, to get anywhere with any kind of efficiency, speed, you are, you have to be good at it. You have to suit up for it. You have to account for sweat, all these different things. You can't carry much with you because you don't have a lot of power. E-biking unlocks the ability to carry stuff with you, go farther uh, for the same like environmental benefits, gasoline benefits. Yeah, I mean, you still have to charge it up and that costs money, but but all the other benefits of bicycling uh, without having that barrier to entry. And barrier to entry is the biggest inhibitor of people getting into something, let's say bicycling bicycling. Mm -hmm. If people like people think that electric cars are the next revolution and they're kind of right in the world where the future is nothing but cars. Cars are a plague yeah. on society. They are literally the worst invention except for all the wonderful things that they've done for the industrial revolution and all that stuff and really speeding up humanity as a whole. But e-bikes. Yeah, shout I, out Detroit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time is like the amount of infrastructure you need to support a city that runs on cars, which is every city on earth pretty much, except for a few European cities that are really bike friendly. Uh, it's so much more space per person than, mm -hmm. than you would ever need with bicycles. Uh, if you do a size comparison to the amount of people getting through a street uh, on cars versus bicycles, the number is astronomically higher for bicycles. Yeah. If even 10% of the population was riding bicycles, traffic itself for those that like cars would almost go away. I don't know if that statistic is entirely true anymore. I heard that a long time ago. I may be quoting that wrong, but it's a, per it's a certain percentage and traffic gets better because less Less people in cars. Yeah, I mean, I'm dating a Dutch person, and <laughs> it's nothing but bikes there. Like as stereotypical and memey as that is, it's astonishing. Whenever you're there, it's so fun to cycle in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. where like the cycle paths are everywhere. If you're actually on the street, cyclists have more right of way than the on, than the cars that go by. They have to like wait. They're not allowed like fly past you. Yeah, it's so nice. And so many people like you see like 60 year olds, 80 year olds sometimes out cycling around mm -hmm. and it everyone just looks far more free. They go out, they go out drinking with their friends or they go out for dinner and then everyone just hops on their bikes and go home. So cool. It's so cool. And what e-bikes do is they lower the barrier to entry because a lot of people are like, I'm afraid to ride my bike in America, let's say, uh, because of the cars and the traffic and whatever have you. And I was too. Mm -hmm. I, I had that feeling. I was like, oh, I got to be really careful about what I do. And you do. I'm not saying you don't. Um, but the difference with an e-bike is I made a 16 mile journey uh, yesterday 
both ways. So total, I, I rode 32 miles uh, on my e-bike. Um, and it's not like I want to do that every day because it took me like total riding was like an hour and a half, hour, 40 minutes. But I did it and I did it safely and effectively because my bike, my average speed on my bike was 22 miles an hour. Like I only, Ooh. I I got there 20 minutes slower than it would have taken me in my car in ideal conditions, no, no traffic jams, no sudden shifts in traffic. Um, and I was on city streets. And what I found is the biggest limiter to my speed was not other cars. It was traffic lights. Traffic lights <laughs> were like the bane of my existence because I'm like, I should be pedaling right now. Excuse <laughs> yeah. you. But it's wonderful. And everyone can do that. There are, there are stories of like older people here in America that are only able to get out and active in any way, shape or form because they have an e-bike because they have that mobility the extra power there there still is a safety concern of course because you know cars are not you know cars are driven by people and people are stupid sometimes uh so they yeah. can make stupid mistakes but that's a risk even if you're in a car uh so when it comes down to like being in a bicycle i actually feel kind of safer because i'm able to control my environment i'm able to like i have the power to escape a situation that i don't want to be in and i have yet to be in a situation like that um but i could and i i'm always on the lookout for anyone that's being stupid on the road and at the same time i get exercise i'm having fun i'm enjoying myself it's just such a goddamn delight dude i'm convinced <laughs> yeah good sales uh, pitch right I'm going to, are you sponsored by? Oh, I might be soon. Super 73. Come on. Super 73 is not for everybody, but you know, for me, it's like, <laughs> those are like the best sponsorships where it's like, dude, I use this all the fucking time anyway. And then they're like, do you want to get paid to talk about it? I'm like, yes, I can do that. Please. Oh my God, please. Awesome. <laughs> they might make me a super custom bike with more range, more power of like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> Uh, you gonna be able to visit me on an electric bike soon. I mean, technically, I could. There are competitions for solar-powered electric bikes cross, not cross country, cross continental electric bike competitions Damn. where they're just like they charge in solar and they just keep going and going. And I think the longest someone's ever gone continuously is like nearly seven thousand miles. Uh, Holy fuck! Yeah, without ever having to stop and plug in. I think I'm pretty sure anyway, it's very cool. It's very cool. Everyone, you could do it. <laughs> you could be like him. You could be like me. You know how cool I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to your audience. Everyone's just going to say yes. <laughs> no, they're not. I've primed. Yeah, them. we know. I, I gaslight them so much to try to break their conditioning to <laughs> kissing my ass all the time. <laughs> It'll never work. Do you realize how many channels and Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts I see on my feet all the time that absolute people absolutely adore you. Uh -huh. we, guys, in the comments below, say you're not brainwashed by me and wouldn't follow me <laughs> over a cliff if I asked you. Say that. <laughs> say that. <laughs> Tell everyone that I don't brainwash you. Uh huh. Yeah, see, the evidence is clear. Clear. Uh, I'm seeing it now. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's, it's just a fun. I love having a hobby now and I love being excited about something, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's so many things to be jaded about. Uh, it's, it's just nice to have something to focus on. Plus being with the corridor guys has been a huge boon. They've just been like, it's just nice to be in a, a environment of creative people for that creative energy. And they, they've been so nice to me because, um, originally it was only going to be a month and then I extended because like, Oh man, I've barely done anything. I also haven't learned any of unreal, which is like my whole point of being here. Uh, cause yeah. I, have, I have so much fun making videos, but they've just been so sweet. They're like, man, you've really been such a added energy to the office. Really nice having you. I'm like, Oh my God. You guys are so nice. sweet. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, I miss it's really lovely. I kind of miss, I mean, I guess COVID kind of messed it up as well, but <clears throat> just being around like creative people all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like kind of when we went to conventions and we were doing stuff like fairly often, you're kind of always in that space. Mm -hmm. And like, you're always talking to other people who are creating stuff and who inspire you. And like, I haven't really had that in a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't really like go out to conventions. Like being at like Tommy's live show last night was cool. Cause it's like, oh man. It's like gets and like Ethan's live show. It's like it kind of gets the juices flowing again. It does. Like, it does. I forgot what I'm able to do. <laughs> yeah, 
And it's like I, you and I, we're all able to do more than we think. And you've got a project coming up and I'm not going to spoil anything of it, but just like, mm-hmm. I'm really excited to see that get off the ground. And yeah, it's like, I do love those moments when you see something that someone else makes and you get that little jolt of inspiration, like, oh, that was cool. I think I could do that too. Like that's yeah. what makes creating really fun for me. That's what I chase all the time. Um, and I think like more people need to be driven with that feeling as opposed to this kind of zero sum mentality of like, if I get something, someone else has to lose it. Or if someone gets something that they're taking away from me, that's not what this right. is. It's never been that it's, it's much more collaborative than you would ever know. Uh, and you would only know that by collaborating with other people and working with them. So yeah, you get out of it, what you put into it, I think, mm-hmm. which is kind of like why I want to do, uh, this, you know, just talk to more people, just like hang out with more people and get their perspectives on things. Because I know that like you and I are kind of on the same page about a lot of things, but there's a lot of other creators out there who have completely different motivations uh, for doing stuff on the internet, making content, completely different ambitions. Some people do want to build those like empires of like corporate magnanimity and, you know, that's cool too, but yeah, I mean, everyone has something to teach you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I want to get more voices in, talk to more people out there, maybe do an internship with, I don't know, some other content house. You know, you I want just, to do an internship for me? Uh, sure, I'll do that. I can teach you a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> like what? Unreal? Right. That's what I'm trying to learn. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I can like buy Unreal and put it on my computer. <laughs> uh-huh. You learn Unreal um, and you teach me Unreal. Yeah. It'd be perfect. Put a, t- put a tutorial on for you. Yeah. Nah, no, nah, we should learn together though. Cause literally I've, I've been goofing off with, uh, corridor guys so much. I have not learned anything. I really have not. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a lot to like take on. Oh, sure. I, uh, yeah. I tried to like learn game engines before and I tried to learn unreal and I, I sat down and watched like tutorials and did it like piece by piece. And I made like a little map that was like a kilometer squared and it was, it was fun. And like, it had like terrain and water and I'm like, oh, this is fun. And then I went back to do it again. I'm like, I don't remember anything Oops. about this. <laughs> like I was just doing it step by step instead of learning. Yeah. That's what, that's what you really need is just the hands on. You have an idea, you make it yourself and that you remember it super tight. That's how I got good with, I mean, probably you too, with Premiere and Photoshop and mm-hmm. all that stuff. It's just like, you need to make a thumbnail. So you make it and then you're done and you remember how you made that one because it was frustrating and then you slowly get better. Yeah, and it's like you need a specific thing. It's like I need to be able to cut my head off and put it on a body. And then it's like you Google <laughs> that. That's such a fun statement. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop taught me how to cut a head off. Mm-hmm. What is missing on this thing? It's If you what tab, it's a surface. There are like some tough stains in grain. There we go. Well, we're just about wrapped up here. Uh, and uh, this show ends when the last bit it gets cleaned. So um, just cuts off. Yeah, it just cuts off. A harsh cut to black. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me on this um, cleaning adventure. It's really been lovely talking to you about various different things. Would love any time have, have you on again. You're, you're you're genuinely one of my favorite people in the world. No, oh. and I feel like despite our, I don't know, because people for a while were like, why don't they? talk anymore why don't Mm -hmm. they play together anymore i'm like man life gets in the way everybody has like different things going on yeah and i feel like we've both been on like parallel paths for so many years and every now and then they like connect and but they're always kind of like going in the same places and we always kind of like have the same mentalities on things and Mm -hmm. i don't think there's ever been like proper bad blood between either of us no no yeah so for anyone thinking you know i mean all all human relationships are interesting and dynamic in a way but no yeah you're one of my favorite people too i love seeing the stuff that you make and i can't wait to help you make some of the cool projects uh you've got on the horizon cooking up in that noggin and uh a big old brain of mine yeah uh person who finds the last spot wins i guess where the frick is it I have no idea. It sh- it should glow when you hit tab. Like a, there'll be a slight glow to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm tabbing, man. One but... of these walls. Ah, oh, found it. All right, looks like I win. Fuck. <laughs> oh, does it give us stats on who did more? Because I, I think you did I a know. considerable amount more than I did. Uh, you can see the time lapse. Wow. Yeah, look at me go. Look at me go. Look Just at make me. the video this time lapse and match our voices to this. <laughs> That'll be the episode recap. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much, man. This was great. Uh, everyone listening at home, you know Jacksepticeye's link is in the description. 
obviously. Uh, cool stuff in the future. Um, and then, yeah, you should come. Uh, you should come back to LA sometime. Yeah, I want to. I want to come back more just for like regular visits instead of <clears throat> when I just have a shit ton of stuff going on. Hell yeah, hell yeah! Can't wait for it. <laughs> <laughs>